Did you know that crows can hold a grudge? Animals do some pretty amazing and spectacularly weird things. They're so unpredictable. And that's one of the reasons we love animals so much. However, there are some animal behaviors that are just plain cuckoo and can be either mind-blowingly impressive or downright terrifying. But who are we to judge? Humans can be weird and scary too. Snakes that can fly, glow-in-the-dark turtles, or Bob the Builder orangutans. Oh yeah, stay tuned. Here are 15 of the weirdest things animals do, part two. To hold their construction together, they rely on the youngest members of the colony, grubs. <laughs> Number 15. Horsehair worm. The rains in California bring out more than wild mushrooms. If you're looking down at the puddles, you might spot a long, brown, spaghetti-shaped creature whipping around madly. It's a hair worm. But if you had happened on the puddle a few hours earlier, you might have witnessed a gruesome spectacle. The hair worm wriggling out of a cricket's body, pushing its way out like the monster in the movie Alien. The 350 or so known species invade insects like the luckless cricket. After developing for several months, the worms mind control their host to make a kamikaze dive into water, then escape through holes bored in the insect's body. The parasites end up in a tangled knot that can be as heavy as the tattered and oftentimes very much alive host they leave behind. All across America, in rivers or streams, horsehair worm eggs hatch and settle lazily to the bottom as larvae. Unable to swim up to the water column, the larvae simply wait to be eaten by the larvae of other insects like midges, mayflies, and mosquitoes. Crickets, of course. After developing for several months, the worms kill their hosts and then escape through holes bored in the insect's exoskeleton. You want to know a little secret? If you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you'll have superpowers for the rest of your life. So what are you waiting for? Time to fly. Number 14. Minnesota Skyscraper Climbing Raccoon A daredevil raccoon was safely rescued after leaving the internet gagged, scaling a 23-floor building in St. Paul, Minnesota. And of course, it trended worldwide online. Crowds gathered at the building after it caught attention, and local media streamed its perilous climb for almost a day. The raccoon spent almost 20 nail-biting hours scaling the office tower. The people gathered with their phones out at the scene to watch. The raccoon has been safely captured, but many questions remain. Why would a raccoon climb 23 stories straight up instead of climbing down? And how is this even possible? According to the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources, it may be a simple mix of instinct and anatomy. If I had to come up with a scenario, they said, maybe hold up in an alley, ran out onto the sidewalk, and then there's all these people around. It's like, ah, the natural instinct is to climb. Nature has equipped raccoons well for this job. Sharp, non-retractable nails cap each of their long fingers and toes and are perfect for digging into craggy surfaces like trees and cliffs. Unlike your house cat, raccoons can even rotate their back paws 180 degrees to climb down surfaces head first. Number 13. Flying snakes? The image of airborne snakes may seem like the stuff of nightmares, but in the jungles of South and Southeast Asia, it is reality. Flying snakes is a misnomer since, barring a strong updraft, these snakes actually can't fly. They're gliders, using the speed of free fall and contortions of their bodies to catch the air. By undulating back and forth, the snake can actually make turns. Analyzing the snake's movements, researchers found that in midair, the snakes undulated their bodies in both horizontal and vertical waves and also bent their bodies to angle their heads upwards and downwards. Scientists don't know how often or exactly why flying snakes fly, but it's likely they use these maneuvers to escape predators, to move from tree to tree without having to descend to the forest floor, and possibly even to hunt prey. To prepare for takeoff, a flying snake will slither to the end of a branch. It propels itself from the branch with the lower half of its body. And lift off, there are five recognized species of flying snake found from western India to the Indonesian archipelago. Knowledge of their behavior in the wild is limited, but they're thought to be highly arboreal, rarely descending from the canopy. Number 12. Biofluorescent Turtles Below the tropical waves near the Solomon Islands, nighttime divers spotted a psychedelic vision, an endangered sea turtle glowing bright red and green. The divers immediately began filming the creature, a hawksbill sea turtle, 
following it for a few minutes until it swam away. No, it's not radioactive, but it's an epic glowing sea turtle. The hawksbill sea turtle is the first reptile scientists have seen exhibiting biofluorescence, the ability to reflect the blue light hitting a surface and re-emit it as a different color. Biofluorescence is different from bioluminescence, in which animals either produce their own light through a series of chemical reactions or host bacteria that give off light. Researchers never expected to find it in a marine reptile. So needless to say, this was cause for great excitement. Though researchers have already found biofluorescence in aquarium-housed loggerhead sea turtles, this is the first time scientists have identified biofluorescence in a reptile in the wild. Right now, scientists aren't too sure what's caused this biofluorescence. However, hawksbill sea turtles are one of the most endangered and protected species in the world, which makes them very difficult to study. What did you find? We found a biofluorescent turtle. turtle. Number 11. Custom-built bat bathroom. Most people and animals are quite happy to get rid of their waste, whether junk mail, garbage, or urine, but plants aren't as discriminating. They enjoy nitrogen-rich poop. Take for instance tropical bats and the pitcher plants who sing to them. Pitcher plants don't have voices of their own, but some particularly large pitchers do have a way of reflecting a bat's sonar pings back at it. Pitcher plants that eat bat poop have come up with a unique way to attract their meal tickets. Plus, it's a common roost for bats. And so researchers came to understand that the bats and the pitcher plants have a mutually beneficial relationship. The plants provide a comfy roost with few parasites and an ideal microclimate. And the bats poop in the plants. Bat waste is rich in nitrogen, a crucial plant nutrient. The plant had adapted to accommodate these tenants. That's why their pitcher are roomier than average and have little fluid. And the bats repay them with fantastic feces. The carnivorous plant has largely abandoned its insect-killing ways and now makes a living as a bat landlord. The bat gets a home, and the plant gets its fecal reward. The plant literally sings for its supper. Number 10. The Ant Death Spiral These aggressive insects have a dangerous tendency to commit mass suicide just because they're following the leader. They communicate and navigate using various pheromones they lay on the ground while marching. If enough worker army ants lose a scent, they lose their ability to navigate. Then each ant literally blindly follows the one immediately in front, forming a spiral that's called an ant mill. Unlike a human, an army ant does not have the cognitive ability to deliberately contemplate or commit suicide. However, army ants who can no longer follow the pheromones they have laid to guide the colony will march in a circle until each member of the colony dies of exhaustion. Although there are more than 200 species of army ants living on both sides of the globe, genetic evidence indicates that they may all have common ancestors and have kept their evolutionary advantages and disadvantages for more than 100 million years. The ant death spiral is a phenomenon noted seemingly only in army ants. The death spiral is an example of what happens when the swarm as a whole gets misdirected, and a convenient metaphor illustrating the perils of follow the leader behavior in any society. Number 9. Dine with the scorpion fly. An entomologist has learned that some male scorpion flies assume the role of female illusionists to steal food from other males and present it as their own courtship gift to a female. An invitation to dine, so to speak. Those flies that pretend to be female succeed in mating more often than those that do their own hunting. A male scorpion fly seeks out a male with a captured prey and mimics the wing lowering and abdominal movements of a female. Once the scorpion fly in drag has a firm hold on the prey, he will fly off with it for use as his own nuptial gift. In proper scorpion fly courtship, a male catches an insect and tastes it for quality. If unsatisfactory, he drops the insect and hunts another. Once satisfied, he hangs from a leaf or twig by his forelegs and invites a female to dine by emitting a characteristic odor. Females can pick up this odor 43 feet away. The female flies to within four inches of the male, hangs in front of him, and lowers her wings as a signal, whereupon the male presents his gift. If the female finds the nuptial offering unpalatable or too small, she flies off and search for another suitor. If she accepts the gift, she continues to feed on it throughout mating. Number 8. Pom-Pom Boxing Crab a new study shows that when a pom-pom crab lacks an anemone, it will steal one from another crab. Then both victim and victor split their single anemone in two, creating identical clones, one for each claw. 
The pom-pom boxing crab is legit a knockout. The crabs clone their poofy accessories and defense. The split sea anemones will regenerate over the course of a few days. The crabs then wield the stinging predators as a means of self-defense or to stun prey. As for what the sea anemones get out of this partnership, past studies found that these captain enemies have greater access to oxygen and food, leftover scraps from the crab, which helps them grow. Now, how cute is that? They're like best friends spending all day together and both profiting from their relationship, which they call mutualism, but they can survive without each other. The crabs swing the poisonous enemies around as a defense mechanism and catch food using them. Pretty clever, right? Boxer crab and an enemy have adapted for this symbiotic relationship just fine. Unlike most crabs, which have robust claws used for grabbing, eating, and defense, pom-pom crabs have claws like little tweezers, the perfect size and shape for holding anemones. Number 7. Bowerbird Seduction Bowerbirds are creative engineers. To attract females, the males build, decorate, and maintain elaborate structures, or bachelor pads, called bowers. A male may spend a week or two months getting his bower in order, depending on whether he is refurbishing a previously used structure or building a new one. Once the bower is complete, the male adds decorative touches using everything and anything he can find and carry. Seeds, pebbles, snail shells, berries, ferns, dead beetles, fresh flowers, spider web, bones, leaves, even bits of glass, cloth, plastic, aluminum foil, and other items discarded by humans. Different species favor different colors. For example, the striped Garner Bowerbird prefers yellow, red, and blue objects. The fawn-breasted Bowerbird favors green. Males of some species also paint their walls with a mixture of charcoal dust and saliva or plant juices. The bird uses his beak or a bit of chewed bark as a paintbrush. These birds have an Australopopin distribution with 10 species endemic to New Guinea, 8 endemic to Australia, and 2 found in both rainforest and shrublands. Number 6. Orangutan Saws Branch An orangutan has been captured performing DIY better than some humans. The incredible news footage reveals a female great ape using a saw to skillfully divide a branch in two. The talented ape uses her right hand to hold the tool and her feet to grip the tree branch like a vice. She even blows away the sawdust to inspect her work like a true craftsman. She previously learned these skills by watching builders at work in the region. When she spots a robot orangutan copying her behavior, the great ape immediately becomes more competitive. When the TV crew arrived in the rainforest and deployed the spy orangutan to film the wild apes, they were left astounded. Spy orangutan had been programmed to saw too, and when the real orangutan spotted her sawing, it seemed to spur her on. After some moments of filming, the robot orangutan sits alongside her while performing the same task. Rather than be put off, the female becomes competitive, furiously sawing to beat her rival. The gripping footage sees the female great ape cut away at the branch, putting her opposite thumbs to good use as she uses her feet to keep things steady. Just amazing to see how perceptive orangutans can be. Number 5. Crow's Lifelong Grudge Crows don't forget a face, and they hold grudges too. Researchers revealed that captured crows remember the faces of their abductor. Even though years had passed since they saw the threatening face, the crows in the experiment would taunt their captor and dive bomb them, suggesting the birds held a grudge. In the study, 12 male adult crows were captured by researchers who were all wearing one type of mask, referring to it as the study as the threatening face. Then during four weeks of captivity, the birds were fed by people wearing different masks. Though both disguises had neutral expressions, their mask was referred to as the caring face. To see what was going on in the birds' brains when they saw both faces, the researchers injected a glucose fluid into the bodies of fully alert crows. The crows were then put in the presence of someone wearing either the threatening or caring mask for about 15 minutes before the birds were sedated and given a brain scan. The fluid revealed which parts of their brain were most active around a center mask wearer. Now the researchers' follow-up studies show that the birds' brains light up much like the human mind when they see a face they know. Number 4. Tail Shedding Lizards Imagine if you could drop an entire limb and have it grow back later. It's a nifty evolutionary trick, but how does it work? In this case, a lizard severs its tail as a self-defense mechanism in order to distract its predator. This is known as autotomy, literally from the Greek self and server, or self-amputation. Lizard tail autotomy has developed so when that the tail breaks, there's no blood loss. 
and the tail regrows over six months to a year. The tail skeleton is replaced by a rod of cartilage with new muscles growing along it, producing a replacement tail that's usually shorter and less colored compared with the original. Lizards are born with a line of weakness in their tail, technically called a fracture plane. If a point of the tail is hit or stressed, the muscles along the fracture plane pull away from another rather than knitting together. This is known as a reflex muscle spasm. The pulling apart of the muscles cause the tail to fall off along the line of weakness. When lizards live alongside lots of creatures eager to devour them, his trait enables them to survive long enough to reproduce and pass their genes to the next generation. Number 3. Remora Riding Sharks Have you ever seen those fish that seem to be stuck in the flesh of sharks? Chances are it's a remora fish. Their front dorsal fin evolved over time into an organ that sits like a suction cup on the top of their heads, allowing the remora to attach to a passing animal, usually on the shark's belly or underside. The shark and remora relationship benefits both species. Remoras eat scraps of prey dropped by the shark, but also receive more than a convenient meal. The sharks protect them from predators and give them free transportation throughout the oceans. And the suckerfish keep the waters clear of scraps around the shark, preventing the development of unhealthy organisms near the shark. The host is also kept clean of irritating parasites that could affect its health in negative ways. So the remora can keep the shark very happy because the parasites would otherwise be very annoying. Sometimes they even attach to whales, manta rays, and the occasional diver. Studies show that many shark species seem to understand the benefit a remora has on its life and well-being. They've been observed slowing down, even risking their own survival to allow remoras to get on board. Number 2. Honeydew Farming Ants a new study throws new light on the complex relationship between ants and the colonies of aphids whose sugary secretions the ants eat. Scientists had previously established that certain types of aphids live in colonies where they are used as a food source by a neighboring colony of ants. The ants have been known to bite the wings off the aphids in order to stop them from getting away and depriving the ants of their staple foods, the sugar-rich sticky honeydew which is excreted by aphids when they eat plants. Chemicals produced in the glands of ants can also sabotage the growth of aphid wings. The new study shows, for the first time, that ants' chemical footprints, which are already known to be used by ants to mark out their territory, also play a key role in manipulating the aphid colony and keeping it nearby, keeping them all together and protecting them from predators such as ladybirds, wasps, and hoverfly larvae. You will also see in the video a ladybird being swarmed by a few ants and a wasp approaching, looking for a meal. Honeydew can form up to 90% of the ants' diet, and they take it back to their nest to regurgitate in order to feed the queen and other workers in the nest. Number 1. Spiral Beehives A certain genus of Southeast Asian and Australian stingless bee has taken their design to another level, building spiral beehives that rival New York's Guggenheim. We know bees are wise, but it's been a secret as to just how these bees develop their intricate spiral, bullseye, and other irregularly shaped beehives. The stingless bee forms unique hives that form upward spirals of 10 to 20 layers. Each layer is one circle of a continuous spiral. Stingless bees store pollen and honey in honeycomb cells, which they make by chewing wax and binding it into egg-shaped pots. Some species clump small, grape-like cells together while others arrange them in horizontal lines. The Carboniera species, however, builds its hive in a clockwise spiral regardless of the shape of the box it's kept in. Invasive beetles that have tried to infiltrate nests have found themselves suddenly covered in a new brew of wax, mud, and plant resin, effectively mummified alive by the bees. Stingless colonies have also been observed waging days-long territory war against the stingless neighbor, resulting in hundreds of bee-on-bee -bee crimes and queens unceremoniously being dethroned. Those were 15 of the weirdest things animals do, part 2. Thanks for watching.